What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Title Gardens. I was asked the other day my thoughts on having a single interconnected system versus having a bunch of separate individual tanks. And I guess we can look at this from just the home hobbyist perspective as well as from like a commercial coral farm perspective. And you might find that both of those scenarios are a lot more similar to each other than you might think. What we have done here at Tidal Gardens is largely interconnected systems, but multiples of those. The smallest systems that we have are roughly a thousand gallons. They might have four or five actual aquariums that tie together into a centralized sump. We do have the occasional outlier tank, for example, for quarantine, things like that. Uh, Becca's show tank is its own standalone tank. Pretty much everything else is interconnected in some way. Our biggest aquariums are about 2,500 gallons total, and it is aquariums that are in the ballpark of 300 to 600 gallons tied into a single 500 gallon sump. The advantages of having some interconnectedness is you really leverage the equipment that you have. So, for example, you really require one protein skimmer, you require one calcium reactor, one dosing system for Kalkwasser, and you've covered, again, six aquariums plus your sump, right? to total up to that 2,500 gallons. That's kind of nice because the alternative is you have six sumps, six protein skimmers, six calcium reactors, six dosing containers. And it's not even like six dosing containers. It's like, it's like 18, you know, because you're likely doing calcium, alkalinity, possibly calc, maybe magnesium, maybe trace, but you've, you've got other things going on. And then on top of that, if you wanted to do reaction chambers for like carbon or for GFO, maybe you want to experiment with ozone on a few of those systems. It doesn't scale well once you have more than like one or two tanks, right? That multiplicative effect of needing all of that extra gear, it can be very cumbersome. Having said that, we are slowly seeing the benefits of having some completely separate aquariums. There are some problematic things that just happen in aquariums. You might just get an onset of like Valonia or whatever that lettuce algae is, like Ulva, vermitted snails happen, Aptasia happens. And despite your best efforts of getting them out of a system, they're always going to persist in super large interconnected spaces. Just because the tanks themselves, you could isolate them, you can razor blade them so that there's not a single molecule of biological matter going on in that tank. And you can repeat that for all of, let's say the six aquariums that are attached. But unless you're willing to literally take apart all the plumbing as well, there's a mile of plumbing probably in Tidal Gardens. Like there's so much potential areas, surface area for little problematic things to persist. And looking at the aquariums, you would never think, oh, well, there's an issue with blank. You'll really never see that here. But trust that these things happen in everybody's tanks at scale. It is redonkulously difficult. Difficult to the point that I've never seen it taken care of. Even the places that are fully willing to f to break down an entire system every now and again and restart it, I still see it. That is just the nature of the beast. When you have completely isolated small aquariums, you probably still will have some chronic baseline of all of these things. But in those types of systems, you really do have the ability to hard reset. You can leave a small you know, let's say a 60 gallon tank empty for six months. You can do that if you have 20 other ones, right? You can just do this rotation of, I'm just gonna dry this thing out, fill it with vinegar or whatever the heck else, and just kill everything. And once it is sufficiently dead, you can 
kind of like swap things over. And that process of swapping and, and constantly resetting, it could theoretically do the job. But I mean, even then, it's the work still has to be done. And a lot of times these chronic issues outlast your persistence, let's just say. But there is that benefit to it. The other big benefit that I see with having completely separate systems is that we lean very heavily on the organism's ability to adapt and adjust to their surroundings. Because if you guys have ever been diving, it's like there's not a ton of variety sometimes just when you're diving in that one location. It might just be like a field of hammer coral. It might just be a field of Acropora. The idea of a huge amount of biodiversity, I don't know, it's a lot less than you might think. What is good for, let's say, a high-end, very delicate SPS like Acropora? And also your lower light, higher nutrient stuff like Ganiopora and Micromusa, that sort of thing. And those are going to be in the same aquarium or the same interconnected system. It's not ideal, definitely suboptimal. And we've noticed it when we're bringing a lot of things like Micromusa into our systems. We run them through like a long quarantine phase. And in quarantine, when they're basically by themselves, they do really nicely. Once we put them into our farming system that happens to be a little bit dialed in more towards like that Acropora end of the spectrum, yeah, there's a noticeable decline. They're not necessarily dying or anything like that, but they don't have that same fluffiness. They don't have that same growth rate. There's just something that's upsetting them. And it could very well be it's just not dirty enough. There's not quite enough nitrate. I think that the nitrate in that system might have been five. And uh, the phosphates are also very low, which tends to be a good thing for the acros, but it's not all things. So yes, the micromusa are adjusting, but it could be better suited for them to have a higher nutrient level, lower flow possibly lower light, things like that. And in these interconnected systems that have that sh roughly share that same chemistry, you don't have that same kind of flexibility. One thing that is kind of underrated or a concern that is probably not taken as seriously as it should is just coral aggression and it is nice to be able to have monocultures knowing that there isn't that kind of interaction going on. Um, this is totally an anecdote, but it is something that I, that I buy into. We have seen bubble tip anemones of different varieties not play well with one another. Like if you happen to have like a certain kind of color morph of this and this color, other color morph of another different bubble tip, and you have them in the same system, not even in the same tank, just in the same system, it seems like one kills the other somehow. It might be a pathogen, it might be some kind of chemical warfare, but you end up with just the one variety. One of the suppliers that we like to work with, they have like 50 or so different types of bubble tip anemones. Every single one has its own separate aquarium. They do not share water or anything like that. So they've had to build out that infrastructure 50 different times and they're cool with it. So yes, having that flexibility and in, in minimizing that type of aggression, I think that that is also a perk that we're looking forward to taking advantage of with separate systems. When it comes to maintenance, that's where I think that the interconnected systems will really shine because you're only cleaning one protein skimmer cup. You're only checking on that calcium reactor once every quarter, maybe filling it up, making sure that the bubble counts are all right. But if you had a bunch of them, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but have you ever serviced six calcium reactors in one day? It's not that fun. Even six protein skimmers in one day, not that fun sets of filter socks. I guess you could do it all in a batch, but it's not amazing. 
So there are maintenance hassles when it comes to having a bunch of individual tanks versus having that interconnected system. And I guess the last thing that I'll bring up is redundancy and risk management, I guess. So if something terrible happens in an individual tank, it's really that only that individual tank that's affected, right? So let's say a heater goes bad, single, single aquarium affected, not 2,500 gallons. If heaven forbid there's a tank leak isolated to the single aquarium, if, for example, the, the return pump fails, that's a single aquarium problem, not great, but it could be a lot worse. Now, in a really big interconnected system, though, you do have some scale-up efficiency when you're designing in redundancy. So that situation of multiple heaters. Well, if you have a heater array, chances are it's going to be handled to some degree. There might be some like control quibbles in there, but you can plan for multiple stages of temperature control. You could plumb in two different return lines. So if one return pump goes down, you still have the other. That line of thinking to individual tanks doesn't scale as well because now you're talking about two return pumps per tank. You're talking about a heater array for every single tank. You could still do it, but it's tougher and way more expensive. I don't have any regrets with how we've set up the coral farm here, but I do have to say that the next cluster of aquariums here is going to be individual tanks. We do kind of have the floor space to have the benefits of both worlds, and that is something that I'm looking forward to. Anyways, guys, some food for thought. Until next time, happy reefing.